In this Motion VFX Academy lesson, we're going to learn about keyframing, which is the main way that you can animate your media's effects, scale, etc. to fit your edit's needs. Take it away, Nick. Keyframes are the gateway to all things animated inside of Final Cut Pro. The term comes from the classical world of animation, where a head animator was responsible for drawing a series of key illustrations detailing the main action a character might perform in a scene. Now a junior animator would then fill in, sometimes referred to as interpolate, all the frames in between these key drawings slash frames. Now the good news is in Final Cut, we are the head animator and Final Cut is our assistant for filling in the action between the keyframes that we add. Final Cut also has a variety of tools that speed up the process of animation without the need to keyframe, such as offering properties in the custom text tool to perform character by character animation or applying Ken Burns as we saw earlier in this series, which will automatically scale in a clip without keyframes. Regardless, the process of understanding keyframing is important. Let's add an effect onto one of our clips in the timeline, and then learn the best ways of adding, moving, manipulating, and deleting keyframes inside of Final Cut. In order to demonstrate this in my open fall weather project, which we're continuing with from the last movie, I'll move to the first clip in my timeline and press C to select it. Let's press Command-5 to open up the effects browser and do a search for the word black. I'll find the black and white effect, which I'll skim over, and then double-click to apply it to the clip. I'll now press Command-4 to open up the inspector where I can see that black and white effect. And since I want to have it animate over a period of two seconds, I'll move my playhead to the beginning of the timeline and the process of adding a keyframe is to click on the diamond shape next to the parameter that you want to target. I'll click and now a keyframe is added. Now the great news is once you've added a keyframe, all you have to do is switch the property on another frame and Final Cut will add the additional keyframe as well as perform the animation. I'll make sure that my clip is no longer selected by pressing Shift Command A and now I'll press Shift Plus to period. Now we can see in the viewer that I'm about to move my playhead two seconds. Here, I'll go back to the amount value, grab the slider in the inspector and drag it all the way down to zero. In order to see this animation in the timeline, I'll press the home key, followed by click the button for full screen playback. Now I definitely see that it goes from black and white to color. However, I think that it's a little bit too short and want to make it a bit longer. Once again, I'll select the clip in the timeline by pressing C, followed by Control V, which is the video animation menu, which we became familiar with when we added a fade in in the effects video. Now in order to isolate just the black and white effect that's at the top, I'll select it. And then from the clip menu, we're gonna choose solo animation. Now only this one effect shows up rather than that large list. I'll move my playhead to approximately four seconds. And then I'm gonna select the keyframe in the video animation list and drag it here over to the right. We can see here that now that animation is longer and we'll confirm that by moving the playhead to the beginning of the timeline and pressing the space bar to play back. Now at any time we can actually select a keyframe in our timeline, right click a keyframe in the timeline and press delete to remove it from the clip entirely. The other thing we can do is copy keyframes along with effects over to other clips. I'll select this clip here in the timeline and press command C. I'm gonna go to the end of this project by pressing the end key. And here on this final clip, I'll go to edit paste attributes, which we saw in the effects video. I'm gonna copy the effects black and white effect and notice that the key frame timing is currently set to stretch to fit. If this clip is longer than the clip earlier in the timeline, the keyframes are going to change their duration. I don't want that, so I'm going to click on maintain, which will keep a four second duration. I will paste this onto the clip, and in order to see it, let's press control V to reveal those keyframes, followed by selecting the black and white effect and going to the clip menu where we can choose solo animation. Here we can see that it definitely fades from black and white to color, but we just happen to want the reverse. In order to to do this, I'm just going to drag this last keyframe closer to the end. I'm going to right click the first keyframe just to delete it. I'll position my playhead on the last frame by pressing the left arrow. Once I get to the end of the keyframe to make sure that I'm on the last frame of the clip identified by the backward L and then just drag up this amount slider back to 100. Now we can see when I scrub the playhead, the fade to black and white. Now what happens when you want to add multiple keyframes such as performing an audio duck? I'm gonna close out my effect browser for a little bit more real estate. And it just so happens that I have an interview clip here in this timeline. I'll move my playhead to just before where that audio starts and then just press the space bar to play back. You know, if you're feeling resentment, you are not putting yourself first. And what happens is, the, the, the lie I guess, is that whoever's feeling the resentment often is projecting that onto other people. So the 
music is definitely competing with the audio from the subject. In order to have the audio be lower just for this section, I'm going to rely on a handy tool called Range Selection. This is available under the toolbar by heading to Range Selection, and it will allow us to map out or select a portion of our audio music, which we can see underneath here. Just before the interview clip, I'll click on the upper part of the audio track and just drag out to get a range, identifying the duration that I would like the audio to be lowered. In order now to lower the audio, I'll drag here on the audio levels line by clicking and dragging to a decibel value of negative 27. If I need to, I can hold down the command key to make sure I only move in one decibel increments. I'll move my playhead a bit earlier and let's just play this back. You know, if you're feeling resentment, you are not putting yourself first. And what happens is, the, the, the lie I guess, is that whoever's feeling the resentment often is projecting that onto other people. We can see there the audio duck was successful. If I need to, I can of course adjust and make audio a little bit louder. Not to mention, click on any keyframe and move it to another place in time or right click it as we've learned. This same type of range selection could also be applied to effects if required. Now let's review all of this information. I'll press A to move back to my default selection tool and move over my first clip, where I'll select it to see that we can easily add keyframes by clicking on the diamond shape next to a given property that we want to add animation to. Once we activate keyframing, we can simply move to another frame in our timeline and then adjust the parameter that we added the keyframe to and we'll then have animation between those two frames. If we need to, we can always right click a clip to choose to show our video animation, not to mention select an animation track and then go to the clip menu where we can solo to focus on that. It's here in the video animation section that we can select a keyframe and drag it to another place in time or right click it to delete the keyframe entirely. We can always copy and paste our keyframes and our effects to other clips by using paste attributes, not to mention rely on the range selection tool in order to perform tasks such as audio ducking, which will add keyframes for us to the visible property.